Based on this request, Social Security, to its credit, flung open the doors of the David L. McCoy building and had our team do a complete all-access walkthrough. Engineer Dr. Dwayne Turton is the project manager spearheading the retrofitting, both in design and concept. While he declined an on-camera interview, he answered all our questions in person. He's the one leading what looked to us like a salvage job, and it is very involved. Vertically, the building was good, but after we did the studies, we understand that if we had an earthquake or if we had a hurricane, we could not 100%, I could not 100%, and the, and the committee and the board could not 100% say the building was 100% safe. And to make it safe, this is the breakdown from New Buildings, the company that built the original structure and was then contracted to retrofit that same structure. It calls for extensive structural and retrofitting works and adds up to almost a million dollars. First, the beams had to be fireproofed by spraying them with a coating, so that meant opening up the ceiling and then spraying each beam individually. And then these fire hydrants had to be installed on every floor. And then, of course, this stabilizing structure had to be joined onto the existing steel frame. And these counterpart cross members installed on every floor across the span of the building. It's a lot and probably unprecedented retrofitting work for a structure of this size. Where was the due diligence and oversight when this is being built? I mean, who approves this sort of thing? Well, I don't want to cast any aspersion as to where it went wrong. So we at the building committee, we officially decided and we have forwarded to the board that we, will, we are requesting a complete review of the building. Are you able to, to trace it in your analysis of events? Are you able to trace all the problems to the seed of a single event or a single uh, a poor decision made at any level, at the corporate level, at the design level, at any level? At this time, I would not be able to point a finger. Um, I think it's a systemic issue in terms of the whole methodology. So we would have to analyze fully all that went wrong. But Social Security builds buildings. You all have buildings all over this country. How could you all have gotten it so wrong? I don't think we got it wrong, Jules, in terms of the, we have a nice building at the end of the day. It looks nice from outside, but inside it's a nightmare, CEO. No, it's not a nightmare, Jules. Not a nightmare, maybe, but certainly a Frankenstein structure. And the first thing you might want to see is who built this thing. It must be the contractor's fault. That would be Fabro's Construction, a company that did not have a history of building structures of this scale. But blaming that enterprise is a little too easy. The fact is, the then Social Security Board of Directors accepted the lowest bid, which was Farber's for just over $6 million. Other well-known contractors were quoting $9 million and above $10 million. Julia Timbrell, who sat on the board and later chaired the building committee, told us she flatly opposed Fabra's selection and voted against it twice at the board level. Why? Because of his inexperience in building such structures. But chairman of the board, Doug Singh, had all confidence in Fabra's. Singh is credited as a driving force behind the project. He told us he supported Fabra's low bid because he felt the office building could be constructed affordably and still feels that the structure as Fabra built it is satisfactory. He says that all the retrofitting is unnecessary and he feels it to be a profiteering scheme. It also became clear in our investigation that Singh introduced Fabra to the supplier for those Chinese-made glass windows, the same kind used at Singh's resort, Blue Zen, where Fabro had been a consultant. In a September 2021 letter to the SSB board, Fabro writes, quote, It was agreed and understood that Fabro's Limited was to build a quality building on as cost-effective a budget as possible. He adds, SSB knew that some items purchased from China would not have test certificates and other similar documentation available but that we were to ensure that all items purchased were of the best available quality. Most alarmingly, he notes, quote, Fabros Limited executed and completed this entire construction project without receiving a central building authority approved set of plans. Fabro told us plainly they wanted a champagne building on a bare budget. And that seems to be the consensus. The building was made on the cheap about $130 per square foot by a contractor without a whole lot of experience. Fabra says he took a huge loss, and at that price per square foot, we would want to believe him. 
It was a misconceived decision. What you pay for is what you get. I could agree on that. That um, there was some, I don't know if you call it an advised decision, but it, it didn't turn out the way they planned it. Where was the due diligence and oversight when this is being built? I mean, who approves this sort of thing? Well, I don't want to cast any aspersion as to where it went wrong. So we at the building committee, we officially decided and we have forwarded to the board that we will, we are requesting a complete review of the building.